Welcome to part two of lecture 12 of aerospace propulsion. Uh, so we left off with this question. What matters for speed of sound and for work exchange and why static versus stagnation quantities? So let's look at the answer. So if we're talking about speed of sound, it's the static temperature that matters, right? The sound speed depends on the local flow conditions and the wave propagation speed is not something that's dependent on your reference frame. So therefore it must depend on the static quantities which are frame independent. For work exchange, it's the stagnation temperature that matters. Again, if we use static quantities, then we would separately have to keep track of changes in kinetic energy. But we can freely exchange internal and kinetic energy without doing any work. So it's really right to use stagnation temperature to keep track of work exchanges. Now our stagnation pressure is going to be a function of flight speed because of the formula we just saw, right? For our new efficient aircraft, our cruise Mach number is 0 0.78. And so because P0 over P is a function of Mach number, um, we can, as well as T0 over T, we can give our engine inlet conditions um, r relative to the ambient static conditions. And these are going to obviously be the ambient static conditions at the cruise altitude. Um, right, so T naught uh, at the engine inlet over, so T naught 2 over the atmospheric condition TA is going to be about 1.12, and the total pressure to static pressure ratio will be about 1.5. But the key point is that the flow coming out of the nozzle depends on the exit static pressure, which is PA. So because the inflow conditions are essentially set by the stagnation properties, they increase as the forward speed of the aircraft and the Mach number increases uh, for given ambient conditions. But the engine nozzle outflow only depends on the static pressure at the nozzle exit. So the ratio of these two things uh, increases with forward flight speed. And again, we're going to consider our flow in our nozzles to be isentropic. And so then the inlet stagnation pressure and temperature um, plus the exit static pressure are all we need to specify the flow conditions. So the exit temperature can be given in terms of the total temperature and the uh, exit pressure and total pressure. Um, and so we can actually get the nozzle exit velocity directly from the temp or the velocity based definition of stagnation temperature and come up with that the nozzle exit velocity V is going to be a function of T naught, P naught, and the atmospheric pressure PA. So now let's get back to uh, the idea of choked flow. So choke is about the limit of how much flow can fit. Right? For a given inlet stagnation conditions um, and gas properties, there's going to be some maximum amount of mass flow that you can fit through a hole of a certain size, a given cross-sectional area. When that limit's reached, the flow is choked. Now the derivation of sort of exactly how you come to the conclusion of when choking occurs is, has actually gone through in the text and if you're really interested I recommend to go through it. But the key result is that choke occurs when the Mach number is exactly one. And we call that minimum area where this occurs the throat. So let's figure out what the pressure ratio should be to get just choked flow, uh, so the stagnation to static pressure ratio for air with gamma 1.4. So uh, take a minute and try to calculate this on your own um, before you move on to the next part of the video.